Good evening, everyone. I'm Dana Hall, president of Ottawa, completing my first year of the two-year term, I'm glad to say. Yep, thank you. Welcome to this, our annual meeting. And uh, the main item of business tonight, board members, as you know, is to welcome new board members, approve and welcome new board members, as well as a couple of additional officers. So that'll be our main agenda item. But I also want to take a, a brief moment and look back and talk some about our future work program, the program for this year. So, but we'll try to keep it light and, and not uh, go on for too long. First on the agenda, I believe, is the Springside Inn has made a special cocktail for this event, the Owasco Lemonade. Owasco Lake Lemonade. Owasco Lake Lemonade. So my job is to make one of those, and I've invited fellow board member, former president, Julie Lockhart, to be the person that I'm showing how to make this drink. So I'm going to proceed now. <laughs> and here, here we go. All right. So this is the glass that is going to become the drink. In here now is ice and chilled vodka. Everybody believe that? Okay. And then a little, a touch of springside lemonade, followed by, to the extent that you, that you want a strawberry coloration, some strawberry puree. So touch of that. Julie, you tell me when. That's good. Voila. <laughs> One not yet mixed cocktail. <laughs> oh, look how good that is. <laughs> Very nice. All right. Well, that's how this special cocktail is made, but in, in equal seriousness or, or joviality, I, I'd like to make a toast to Aula and to Owasco Lake. So if you have a glass handy, a water glass, a or a bottle. So here's to us, to Aula. I think Aula has been in existence since 1988. Am I remembering? Is that right? Yes. So that's uh, 32 years. A lot has been accomplished, as you well know. And we have, of course, ongoing challenges. So to Aula and to Owasco Lake, this precious Finger Lake re freshwater resource, here's to you. Here, here. Here, here. Here, here. Here. Cheers. 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 Thank you. So now we'll uh, continue with our meeting. So next up on the agenda, we wanted to we wanted to thank Paul Lattimore. Paul is not with us tonight. He was the first. He was the first president of this organization, Paul Lattimore. And so we have have prepared what we call our map and plaque. And I'll get that to Paul sometime soon. But yep, I'm Sean. Uh, so yep. Oh, I'd oh. be happy to. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. accept it on his behalf. Oh, what about Sean? Yes. So on behalf of Paul, I'll start over here, folks. On behalf of Paul, this is obviously a map of Owasco Lake. Uh, we have these framed at, at uh, Nash's framing service here in, in the village and a plaque that commemorates Paul Lattimore. Sean, you're, you're I, I remember the meetings. Yeah, 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 yeah. many years ago. And so with very best regards, please convey Thanks this. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thanks to all of uh, our, uh, it's, it's a wonderful organization and I know everybody dedicates a lot of time and um, uh, pay is always typically a little low, right? Probably <laughs> board members. So, so we appreciate everything you do as a community member and as a business owner, you know, we, um, I do appreciate it. And I know my father would as well too. And Sean, we need to, Sean, we need to thank you. Yeah. yeah. We need to thank you for everything that Springside Inn does for us. Good, We're looking forward to coming back again now that we seem to have enough. Right. Now that we can. Yeah. So thanks for this evening. For the 
special cocktail. You did a good job. Maybe you, uh, I got an application out in the other room. <laughs> <laughs> if you have weekends open, then we're ready. Very good. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. We're trying to do this mixed format hybrid meeting, Zoom and in person here at Springside. Our agenda is not very formal this evening. The main event that we want to talk about is uh, introducing a slate of board members, a couple of additional officers, two shifts and positions, and then we'll, yeah, we'll vote on that. Yep. And then you want to mute me. Okay, so Some, someone out there in the wilderness, can you, did you hear anything that I said? Can you all see the uh, slide? What's up? Somebody give me a... Yes, we yeah, can. Okay. Not a mock. Yes. The slide is showing. You can see the slide. Okay. Fantastic. All right, so, so we're going to try to proceed with this, our first hybrid Zoom meeting, board meeting. Welcome, everybody, those of you tied in by the by the net and, and the many of you who are here in the Springside Inn again, finally, after 15 months or so, much too long. Again, I'm Dana Hall, and uh, our agenda this evening is pretty informal, one main event. Uh, electing board members and, and uh, welcoming them and a couple of officer changes. And then I also wanted to just take a few minutes of your time and look back at recent accomplishments and ongoing work, as well as talk some about what our work program looks like for the remainder of this year and for next year through 2022. But before we jump right to that, we wanna make this evening um, fun and all. And so some Awa, Owasco Lake, Trivia questions have been prepared, and Carol, would you like to? Let me do it now. Um, yeah. I think you, okay. would, you would do maybe two or three. Yeah, I'll do. Uh, sure. Okay, you ready? Yes. There it is. Okay, so we're going to do some trivia questions throughout the evening. Um, you, am I coming through? All right, and uh, they're just for fun, no no prizes, and to learn more about Owasco Lake Watershed and about Aula as an organization. You may hear a little sound. I think it, I'm not sure if it's coming through or not, um, but we are trying to get your attention when we do that sound because the trivia questions are so important and you don't want to miss them. <laughs> I'll show you the question on a slide and then give you a few seconds to think about it before showing the answers. So let's go into our first question. As residents of the Great Lakes Basin, we are not responsible, we'll pick one of these, we are not responsible for harmful algal blooms or HABs. We are stewards of 21% of the world's fresh water. We are allowed unlimited use of water. We have fewer watershed responsibilities. We do not suffer from droughts. And the answer is, as residents of the Great Lakes Basin, we are stewards of 21% of the world's fresh water. And if you look on the right side of the slide, there's a map of the Great Lakes Basin. It's the drainage basin going in, and Lake Ontario is in the light blue over kind of the bottom right. Um, and you can see that the Finger Lakes region is clearly within those boundaries. Okay. Question number two, which is a true statement about the Owasco Lake watershed? The watershed is two times larger than the lake by area, or is it a hundred times larger, six times larger, or the watershed is as large as the lake? 
Yes, you can. Okay. And answer is C, the watershed is six times larger than the lake. Uh, so how we treat the 208 square miles of watershed determines the health of a Wasco Lake. And if you look on the right side of the slide, there's a map there as well. Um, the lightest blue is the Owasco Lake watershed, and you can note that it, uh, how much of it is to the east and south of the lake. And it's the collection point for all of the water used in this 208 square mile watershed. And then we'll do one more, just question number three. No? Yeah. No. <laughs> okay. Uh, Awasco Lakes watershed includes 15 municipalities. Which of these is not in the Awasco Lake watershed? The town of Groton, town of Fleming, town of Niles, or the city of Auburn? Anybody know the answer? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Anybody okay. know the answer who hasn't cheated? <laughs> who, ha who didn't write the questions? Uh -huh. <laughs> The answer is the city of Auburn is not in the Owasco Lake watershed. While Auburn is not in the watershed, it is the lake is the city's source of drinking water. And we also affect um, the outflow of the lake and where it goes eventually into Lake Ontario. And then okay. I'll take a break and back to our main events. Right. So Dave, can you yeah. pivot over the camera? <laughs> <laughs> So if you pivot the camera, will that miss something? Want to be seen? The election? Well, actually, we need to have Jim. Jim, yep. yeah. Jim you want to come up here sure. and be the presenter of our... Yes. I will show people when it's time for hands up. Okay. Do I stand up? Or? We just, uh, just so you can hear you and then oh. you'll know, see this. Good evening, now. everyone, and welcome to the Zoom meeting. And what we're doing tonight is after um, probably we, and we started on this six months ago yes. um, for nominations for the board of directors and some other officers with AWA. And our committee consisted of um, Nancy and um, Dana, uh, Ann, and myself. And uh, tonight, I'd like to present our slate and be able to vote on it. And let me just say, um, I'm going to go through this. You have it on your screen. And what you're going to have to do, Dave, you're going to have to explain it. <laughs> but do a thumbs up or a thumbs down, right? Right, right. On this. And uh, if you have any questions, you can tell me right now. <laughs> Nope, I don't hear anything. If you okay. can't do the thumbs up or thumbs down, uh, we're going to take away the, the uh, list of nominees here and be able to see you. So you can just raise your hand and let us take a look before you put it down again. So we can do okay. that. The OWL of officers and board members election ballot. One single ballot vote will be cast for the entire slate of candidates for office and board members positions in the special elections and general elections. The slate of candidates listed below are current AOLA members of good standing. At least most of them. No, they, <laughs> they, they, they definitely are. Okay. Please cast your vote by using the thumbs up or thumbs down reaction option at the bottom of the Zoom screen. Okay, hang on everybody. Here we go. Okay. If, you can't, if you can't do that, raise your hand. Okay. Let me let me uh, go through it though. Okay. Uh, the special elections for executive officers to complete 2020 through 2022 terms, open officer positions. Okay. I want to go through that. I'll do it again quickly. To complete 2020 through 2022, these are the term open officer positions. President-elect, recording secretary, and, um, and our officers are Ann Robson, Robson, <laughs> and Elaine Berry. 
And I'd like, I'd like to say that um, both of these positions are uh, time consuming. Um, and uh, Anne was the recording secretary and she did a great job. Elaine's gonna do a phenomenal I job. I mean, I mean, why do I do that? <laughs> I've done that all, all the time I've known you. Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> anyway, so that's that for the special elections of the executive officers. Special elections for term vacancies on the board of directors to complete the 2019 through 2022 term open board position. And we'd like to, we nominated and have Dave Carr as our nominee for that position. So he'll be completing that term. The third is general elections, and that's for the term 2021 through, through, through 2024. The candidates for the Aula Board of Directors are Sue Gatto, Gato, Gato, oh Gato. my gosh, <laughs> Gary Finch, Julie Lockhart, Ken Post, Ann Robeson, and Carl Weber. That is our presentation. We have presented our slate, and now we, we want to vote. Okay? Okay. Are we ready to? Sure. Can we do this? We can do it. We can try. Okay. Okay, here we go. Okay, everybody push the right buttons. Thumbs up on the reactions. Okay. <laughs> or raise your hand if you don't know how to do the thumbs up. Yes. I'm seeing no thumbs down. That's a good thing. <laughs> Great. Okay. Thank okay. You. Do we know how many people? Oh. It's been, what was it, unanimous? I think so. I've known something. Okay. We'd like you to know people. that yes. that was a unanimous vote, and that's a real, real encouragement for our. Um, for our board of directors and officers. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Jim. Welcome uh, new officers, Madam President-elect, Recording Secretary Eileen Berry. Thank you. And uh, new board members and changes in board member positions. Thank you all. Those of you who are renewing your board positions, thank you. So we have a couple more trivia questions. And Carol, would you like to, or you want me to do? Yeah, why don't you do your thing? Okay. So I'm going to do my thing here. But. All right, so in uh, those of you who purchased a dessert and drink box, in those boxes is a one pager entitled, What Does Aula Do? Those of you who are looking at this and perhaps seeing it for the first time, um, it just synopsizes some of our recent service to the watershed, service to the lake, and, on, and currently some of this is still ongoing work. But I, I'm trying to point out to everyone that we really do hands-on, get your feet dirty, get your hands dirty, real work. We don't just uh, have social meetings and, and um, talk about things, we do real work. And so three examples of this, that, three examples of this, if you would indulge me. Um, I hope at this stage, everyone here and everyone on the, on the network realizes that our watershed is uh, facing maybe its toughest challenge yet. Uh, there's an invasive pest called the hemlock woolly adelgid brought here from Asia, maybe 20, 25 years ago. It's now coming up from the south and it's just, just now, the last 10 years or so, reached our immediate area. These little bugs suck the sap, suck the sap out of hemlock trees and over a period of years, kill those trees 
every hemlock we have in our watershed is likely to be lost other than those that we collectively, and it's up to all of us, take, take time and, and money and so forth to treat with insecticide. Down the road a little ways, Cornell hopes to grow a stable population of predator insects that will feed on this HWA and so then we won't need to use insecticide. But this is a, a major time commitment, a major resource commitment, money commitment that we all have stepped up to and it's going to go on folks until these predator insects are established. So we're looking at a 10 year, 12 year work program here. Right now we've just finished, we're just about finishing our first spring treatment season. So that's one ongoing, and I hope everyone will agree, very important contribution to our, our watershed's health. Secondly, um, second thing we did was in uh, early April, right after a rainy weekend, it was still cold and muddy and all of that, but 20 volunteers, some were OWLA members, many were not, three were Boy Scouts and their parents. Um, we all got together and planted 2,500 willow tree starter canes, those along a, a bench, if you will, separating a, a large crop field from Vaness Brook. Now it'll take a, a little while for this newly established filtration buffer to get established, but the idea is that during times of high water, the underlying grass and these willows will prevent much of the clay runoff that had been going into the nest and creating a big plume out into the lake. So it's a, a now completed activity. We hope to do more with other farmers of similar, similar nature. Then the last activity I just want to remind you all of, for the past couple of years, we've partnered, we've partnered with the Soil and Water Conservation District, the County Soil and Water Conservation District, and also with the local highway departments. So wherever roadway ditches the soil is exposed because they've been cleaned out or, or simply eroded. The intent of this program is to hydro seed or rock line, like you can see in this, this picture on, on the left-hand side, or, or rock line to stop the erosion from roadside ditches. A significant part of the sediment nutrients that make their way to our lake actually come from the ditches along our roads. This is ongoing. And um, I just heard today, as a matter of fact, of a project that uh, Soil and Water is doing on ditches on, I think it's Hicks Road. Yes. So that's a look back, everybody, at the real hands-on contributions we all are doing, not just raising money, but in some cases raising money, but also out there. Sitting to my right is Peter, Peter Rogers uh, in the early parts of January this year, Peter and I and Carl Weber sitting a little more to my right and a couple of others were out in the woods and uh, uh, surveying looking for hemlock, hemlock woolly adelgid. And so um, lots of hiking and opportunity to slip and so forth. <laughs> okay, so any questions about my brief look back? And anyone on the net, if you have a question, maybe the easiest way to submit your comment or your question is to use the chat box, which is located down at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Just type in what your question is and we'll be able to see it here. All right, I'll, I'll take just a few more minutes. If you'll indulge me, I, I wanted to give us all a preview of what we, the board, have largely settled on, not entirely yet, but largely settled on for what our areas of emphasis will be for the rest of this year, 2021, and then through next year, 2022. So not necessarily in order of importance, but one thing we will be continuing to do is monitoring from shoreside the uh, 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 presence of harmful algal blooms, probably starting in July, hopefully not till August. Lisa Heaton is our manager for this program. I know she needs some additional volunteers for a couple of sectors. 
And uh, Lisa, I don't know if you are on and if you, and Dave, I don't know even if she is on, if she could. I'm not sure she's on. Okay, so, so Lisa Heaton is our manager for this very important program, monitoring from Shoreside. Uh, once or once a week, I think, Julie, right? Once a week, the presence or, or absence of HABs. Another part of our work that we're continuing, Brian Brundage and uh, Michelle Pliss Bartlett um, are supporting the statewide Citizens Lake Assessment Program, or CSLAP. And practically what that means, folks, is every other week, these volunteers go out to a, a site in the northern part of the lake and take water quality, it's analyzed at the lab, they check for water clarity, they check the water pH, the temperature, and a number of other parameters I didn't just list, but um, I didn't I just mention to you, but um, a great deal of effort goes into their, their support. It's reported then to DEC, and our data, Wasco's data is combined and compared with about 200 other lakes across New York State. So that's what CSLAP is all about. We'll continue our support with that. I mentioned our ongoing partnerships um, with the highway departments in the Soil and Water Conservation District to try to reduce erosion from roadside ditches. Rick Nelson is our lead for that activity. Rick uh, will continue that role. And, and I mentioned that looking back, it's also a looking forward activity. The next item on our work work list, and you'll see this as I mentioned a few minutes ago for the forecoming years, is doing everything in our power to suppress, if you like that word, suppress the damage of these of this hemlock woolly adelgid HWA in our hemlock forest, and um, the damage that will result from um, erosion if the hemlocks die along the sides of ravines and gullies and so forth. Also on our, our work list is an activity that we've talked about over the past year, but now maybe with this fall can really swing into gears, an activity that Kim Mills, who's sitting two people to my right, um, is the lead of a small team defining how and what we might do to work with science teachers, I think in middle schools, I'm looking at Kim, in middle schools, uh, to teach their students, help them teach their students, or maybe we help teach their students, depending on what the teachers want, about what a watershed is and how important it is to take care of the lake and things like that. So, Kim, did you want, do you want to switch positions with me? And sure. I probably just said everything you were planning to say, right? <laughs> I can offer a brief update for the committee working with teachers or education program. We had this program in place at the very beginning of the pandemic and, and put it on hold for obvious reasons. We are now uh, working to reconfirm commitments from teachers from middle school um, classrooms in the Wasco Lake uh, region. Um, next week, we have a, coordinate, uh, a uh, meeting to coordinate with the the education director at Finger Lakes Institute to discuss uh, sharing educational curricula, uh, launching a pilot program, uh, gaining uh, her experience working with teachers in school systems. So there's a committee of five of us just in the stages of um, putting this uh, program or committee work back together for the coming school year, fall. 2021 through uh, June uh, 2022. So thanks. Almost done with our work program going forward. Just two more bullets, if you will. The next to the last continues our ongoing advocacy and reach out education with the, with the public. There's lots of aspects of this that we have been doing and will continue to do. Uh, that includes our social media postings and Tracy Stewart, you're, you're central to a lot of that work. We thank you for, for your support. Um, we also have an ongoing cadence of about once a month. I, I think it's pretty rare that we miss a month that we don't have an article in the Auburn Citizen. 
and also reproduce on our website, I think, Dave. Um, lots of other activities like that, trying, trying to remind people no matter where they live, whether they're right on the lake or back in the hills, never go to the lake, what they do impacts eventually the, the uh, lake's water quality. Ken Kudla, you would say uh, it's the shed. What happens in the shed impacts the lake. <laughs> last item of our proposed work, and this, this part put a probably in front of this last bullet because all we as board members at our next board meeting need to discuss this one. It, it reads, we will resume our stream water quality monitoring. Some of you who are veterans from a couple of years ago recall that we did a three-year program of monitoring about 14 or 15 sites, Peter, taking samples um, 12 or 15 times a year, taking them down to a lab in North Syracuse, analyzing the results. Um, what came to all that? Well, we finished up that program in 2018 one thing that came of that is that we identified three upstream farms that were reducing, uh, that were releasing too much, whatever they were doing, you can imagine, was releasing too much in the way of nutrients, particularly as well as sediment, particularly, but nutrients from their farming activities. We identified them to the DEC. Um, and the other thing that has now come of, of our data, of our data, is that's the data that the 9E plan, which is a federally mandated plan, there's a model that, that tries to replicate what the watershed does. It was our data that was used to verify and calibrate that model just recently. So in theory, at least, this, this set of logic and, and computers now can replicate <coughs> what happens when, fill in the blank, big storm or timber gets cut or so it was our data that allowed that, that model to come to the state of maturity that it knows. So board members, just being brief here, um, do we resume our stream water quality monitoring after a two year hiatus, not only to prepare what, what we observed before, but also to keep feeding various models and research efforts. A lot of work, we've got to talk about it. And some of you remember we have money set aside to pay the lab analyses, but are we going to now put on our boots and go back out. And, and along with that, you have the uh, John Hafton Freshwater Institute. He has his monitors. Advance some of those so that we have other and Cornell, I think, is involved. So it's uh, we are consuming some of that already without our Wow. That, that's true. If those of you who maybe couldn't hear Jim, uh, he's pointing out that we aren't the only people monitoring the water quality of the lake. Dr. John Halfman from the Finger Lakes Institute uh, uh, has been doing so now for many years. And each spring at what is now the Bob Brower Memorial Symposium, he presents his analyses from this from his past year and compares it with what he has observed in past years. Very valuable. Uh, set up data gathering um, and tap waters walkers and researchers at Cornell also are, are helping analyze uh, water quality but um, a big part of what was being done was being done by us and so do we now step back into the breach okay so that's our uh, that's our probable work program what will we be doing over the next uh, 18 months or so. Any other questions or comments, board members, those of you who are here in the room? Oh, is it a good time to thank you for being such an excellent chair? <laughs> yes. Could you repeat that? So I'm oh, <laughs> grateful that you have such a wonderful President-elect. Follow you. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, there's <laughs> <laughs> okay, I certainly agree that we have a wonderful person to follow me. Yeah. <laughs> we have a year to learn. I have a lot of chapters. We're going to do the trivia, and then I'd like to ask the teacher name. Oh, I see. Okay. 
All we right. Have, so we have a head. Do you want to talk heads? I got a heads map up for you. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I mentioned, folks, our continued shoreside surveillance. Linda uh, Heaton is apparently not with us, not Lisa, on the network. Lisa, Lisa Heaton. Uh, Lisa Heaton. I'm sorry. I apologize. But uh, Julie is um, her able deputy and helper. So, Julie, over to you. Hey, everybody. Um, so, volunteers from Aula have been uh, monitoring the shoreline of Owasco Lake for several years now. I think this will be our fifth or sixth year. And you don't have to observe every single inch of the lake shore. Um, but it's nice to have a representative sample. We've got, I think about 27, 28 zones and they go all the way around the lake. Um, some places, uh, when you look at this map, look a little bare and that's because there's cliffs and nobody wants to try to go down the cliff to, to walk along the shoreline, which doesn't exist. Um, yes. Um, so what I'm bringing up tonight for Lisa, who couldn't be here, um, she called me this afternoon and said she couldn't breathe and was using her inhaler <laughs> a lot. She has really bad allergies, so she apologized. Um, there, if you look carefully on the east side of the lake, there are five little red triangles, and those are actually zones that we need a volunteer for. And I believe, um, trying to I need better eyesight, um, they're at... Denman Cove, um, just south of Buck Point, not Buck Point, Burtis Point, sorry. Burtis Point. Point. Yeah, so there's one just south of Burtis Point. There's one at Denman's Cove. Um, trying to look here. Yeah, Koenig Point, thank you. You can tell I didn't grow up here. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> hey, I can see. Yes, thank you. Um, so yes, one just south of Burtis Point, um, one at Denman Cove, one at Koenig Point, and if we continue south, um, there's one at Seward Point that's open, and then one that I think is Indian Cove or Burge Point. Um, so these are places that we would love to have somebody who lives right along mm -hmm. there, who would be available um, usually on Sundays or Mondays just to go out at uh, late morning, early afternoon, and take a look and see what you see um, and what you're your responsibility would be would be to take a photograph, um, whether you see a have or not. Um, you would get training on how to identify them, which is pretty amazing. Once you see one, you can't unsee it. Um, and it, it is very useful information to help understand the conditions and the locations on our particular water body of where these things show up. Um, so if you live near there or know someone who's gonna be around most of the summer, um, you can always get a sub for a week or someone can come and do it for you. And um, you'd be taking a photograph, filling out an online form and uploading that to a, a map that the Department of Environmental Conservation maintains and the public can view it. So they keep that data archived and it's very useful from year to year to see what's going on. So this is a citizen science project that is becoming more valuable every year as we go on. Um, and we'd love to have you on board. So if you know someone, please, please, um, you can email um, one of us or leave a message on our website or on our Facebook page. And uh, thanks. Thank you, Julie. Anybody want to volunteer right now? <clears throat> <laughs> Anyone who isn't already double time? <laughs> okay, so uh, Carol, do you have a couple more? Yeah, I have three more. Do you want me to do them all at once? Or? Yeah. Sure. Okay. okay, so back to the trivia questions. We have three more, um, and I'll start right away with number four. Water from Owasco Lake flows into which bodies of water? <laughs> the Owasco River, Seneca River, Oswego River, Lake Ontario, or all of the above? Okay. The above. And surprise, surprise, it's all of the above. Mm -hmm. 
and um, Owasco Lake's water level is then maintained with these downstream <coughs> impacts in mind as well as what's happening in the lake. And the quality of drinking water for more than 40,000 people depends on Owasco Lake. Um, if you look at the map on the left side, it's a, actually a map of the Oswego River drainage basin. And it shows that uh, all the Finger Lakes pretty much flow in um, Owasco Lake going into Seneca River, which then goes into the Oswego River and flows into Lake Ontario. And I found out in all my research for this that oh, the Oswego River is one of the main inputs into uh, Lake Ontario. So we have a big impact on that. And when I said went into Seneca River, I also meant that it's the Owasco River that goes into the Seneca River. Um, so <laughs> next one, uh, I knew I missed one. <laughs> um, number five, what has Allah done over the past year to help the lake? Um, we did a hemlock tree survey and a, a $25,000 donation for protection from invasive pests, a $5,000 donation towards the Emerson Park Sluiceway cleanout and maintenance, planted a 2,500 willow buffer on farmland near Van Brook, promoted public awareness through social media, a letter writing campaign to support updated watershed rules and regulations, or all of the above. And you can kind of look at that for a few seconds and grasp that. And no surprise, since I gave it away in my first first response, um, all of the above. And just a little hint here, AULA is a volunteer membership-based nonprofit organization for regular citizens who care about Owasco Lake and its water quality. And then we'll go on to the final question. Um, we can protect Owasco Lake by... A, planting and protecting trees, not disposing of lawn waste and streams or tributaries, safely disposing of animal waste, practicing conscious lawn maintenance, joining AULA, or all of the above. <laughs> all of the above. And the answer is surprising, all of the above. <laughs> and remember that everything we put in the watershed adds up in the lake and then downstream. And I think that was it for the trivia questions. Thank you very much, Carol. Thank you. Thank you. If, you would, if you would leave that slide up, or the previous one, leave that slide up. Please. Linda, as our lead for membership, would you like to sure. reinforce a little bit? I'm Linda Vitale, and um, I've always been in obviously aware along with everyone that there's nothing more important than the air we breathe and the water we drink. So you can only imagine the shock that I had several years ago when I walked down to the beach at my house and I found it completely covered with green. I was scared. That was my biggest emotion and I didn't know what to do. So I decided I would join Aula. Now a couple things happened by joining Aula. One of the things that happened by joining Aula is that I found myself in the company of the most wonderful people that you could be with. The people that are on our board and the people that work, we work together, they're just absolutely wonderful people. And we dedicate our time. And I would like to, as the membership chair, invite you to become part of the solution. And I'm sure that many of you who are listening are already part of the solution and that you are members. But I would guess that perhaps you know several people who maybe that you're close and everyone cares about the lake. We all want clean water. So therefore, I'm absolutely sure that you may know people who are not members of Owasco uh, Aula. So what you could do for us is that you could invite them to become members of Aula. Actually, my children don't get Sunday dinner unless they continue their membership. And that, that's just like, it's like a requirement to be related to me. So um, I just, I want to invite you to do that because there's nothing more important than our lake. It is the most important part of our, for recreation, for tourism, for the drinking water. It is our most important um, uh, 
and, and we're working hard for you. We're working very hard for you, working hard for the lake. So join us by inviting others to become members. And in your box that you received, there's a membership form. Actually, if you go and join online, it's very easy to do that. We would invite you to do that. But we would invite you to send in your membership form also. So thank you ahead of time for inviting all the people that you know to join our work. All right, so I think we have walked down through what we intended to cover this evening. Are there any other announcements or business matters, old or new? Hearing none then, could we have a... Uh, I make a motion. <laughs> Jim, Jim Beckwith, true to form. <laughs> motion to adjourn and uh, second. Second from Eileen. And I, let me ask, are there any questions in our chat box? Mm. No, uh, Rick Nelson, though, he said way back to about the ditch work, he says, we accept donations <laughs> to continue our ditch work. So that's true. So thank you, everyone. Thanks to the several of you who put so much work into organizing this evening and everything about it. Wonderful job. Thank you so much. And Daniel. Isn't that uh, the Fox Toyota grant that? That's, that the Fox Toyota is what got that started. And, yeah. and then and then we went out and then Joe we went out and raised funds from others like New Core Steel and right. and assembled a total of forty five thousand dollars that is still being pulled against if you will still being used. And everyone should celebrate that fact. Thank you. And Daniel Kuhn uh, asks, is this the shortest meeting in history? <laughs> yes. 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 Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Nancy. Just a quick note, um, our article this month, and thank you, Dana, for contributing a lot to that, was the featured article by Auburn Pub on Facebook. Yes. yes. Wow. Right. Great article. Really yeah, good. Yeah. Good, good. Thank you, Nancy, for making it even better. <laughs> okay, Any anything else? Going once, going twice. No. All right. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thanks, folks.